Hi guys, my father wants to go ice fishing and his ice auger hasn't run in a number of years and the last time it was used, it was fueled with ethanol laced gasoline. Follow along while we see if we can get this thing fired up and running. Thanks for watching. What we have here is an older Jiffy ice auger, uh, eight inch I believe. And uh, I'm guessing this probably dates back to the 1980s, uh, probably later 80s. It's been a good ice auger. Uh, ooh, that's pretty stiff. It's got a Tecumseh motor up on top, two stroke, fuel tank, recoil pull start, and it's got a little gearbox which goes down to the, uh, to the auger. Now before everybody decides to light up the comment section saying that uh, we should convert this over to a drill plate and run it off of a 20 volt cordless drill. Well, I gotta be honest, the number of times that uh, my father goes fishing in a year, I think uh, we'll just see if we can get this going and that'll be uh, a good investment. Spending uh, several hundred dollars on a drill plate and getting a good 20 volt drill to run it with just isn't in the cards. Let me take the, uh, the auger head off of the uh, auger flight here and uh, get it so we can clamp it into that workmate and we'll see if we can fire things up. One big bolt, I dug out some Allen keys but it turns out the Allen key for taking it apart hides down here by the primer bulb. Definitely uh, a little bit grungy. We can give that a quick spray down with some brake cleaner and that'll clean up. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see down into the um, fuel tank or not. And that's probably ooh, some pretty syrupy looking stuff down on the bottom there. But there's not much. That's a good thing. Good thing there's not smell of vision Yeah, it's not that strong, but definitely there's a, that's shellac in the bottom of that tank. We'll try and rinse that out and then dump it rather than trying to run it through the, uh, the fuel screen. As I noted before, the throttle is not real uh, in a big hurry to return. That's a little bit gummed up. Over here we've got the primer bulb and it has something kind of shooting out of the center of it here when I push a little bit on it. So might be a, some leakage going on there. Um, the rest of the bulb is fairly pliable, so it might just be a matter of plugging the hole of your finger and a little bit of a shot. Ooh, that is plugged. I'm guessing that carburetor is going to be gummed up. Well, that gives us something to start with. Now, unfortunately, the way I've got it braced, less than ideal for me to pull on it and give it a good pull, but it is not seized, so that's a good thing. Uh, let me put you guys on a stand. We'll see if it's got any spark. We've got our kill switch. That is off. That is on. I've got the spark tester sitting in the in line with the spark plug and uh, we'll just give it a quick little pull over here. Now since this is a, uh, a piece of equipment designed to work in the winter in the snow there's no uh, air filter on it there's just kind of a cover on the carburetor down underneath. I didn't see any spark. There's a spark. Yeah, we got spark. That's good. We've got compression. We've got spark. Let's pull the uh, spark plug out of this thing and uh, put a little bit of fuel down there and see if it does anything. Pull the uh, spark plug out, take a look at it here. I don't know whether you guys can see that or not, but that plug is, uh, looks pretty new to me. Use a little bit of this pre-mixed two cycle oil or two cycle fuel.
know, it helps if we put the spark plug lead on. <laughs> oh, ho, we got progress. That sounded pretty good. The exhaust port is down under here. I think our next step is uh, going to be giving them everything a good clean up, wipe down. Then we'll uh, pull the tank off, see if we can flush that out and get up the carburetor. Let me get a few supplies put together here and I'll bring you guys back when I'm ready to start back on this. Give it just a little bit of a spray, soften up some of this uh, grunge. So a little bit further evaluation here after we've cleaned stuff up. The primer line is nice and flexible. It's got lots of uh, life left in it, but the fuel line is like absolute cement. Fortunately, digging around in my father's junk bin, I did find a uh, piece of fuel line here that uh, is just about the perfect size, and I think it is uh, even rated as fuel line. So we'll be able to change out the fuel line. I'm going to uh, try and get convince that fuel tank to pop off of there and uh, then we'll see what we can do about resurrecting the carburetor. We'll start off taking our hose clamp off. I don't really like worm gear clamps but that's what's on there. Hopefully we can convince this line to come off. Oh, it wasn't too bad but as I say that is absolute cement. Just a little bit stiff. Up here we've got two little tabs that are holding the, uh, the fuel tank down into that slot stamped into the cover. Hopefully we can convince those to pop out of there. Put that on. And Oh, there we go. Perfect. Now we can try and rinse the worst of the grunge out of this. Spray a little cleaner in. certainly looks better. We'll just leave that soak in there for a little while and when we're ready to put it back on we'll dump the cleaner out of there.
This is the choke lever. And this is the throttle. And now that we've uh, got everything taken apart and got the worst of the uh, grime and everything peeled off there, the, uh, the throttle is closing quite nicely. You can see these two screws that are out on the front. That's just holding this air deflector, which seems to have some crap in it. Good thing we got that cleaned out. But that's not what holds the carburetor on. The carburetor is held on by a couple of, I'm not sure if those are maybe about a 10 mil, maybe a little less. Of course, this machine's old enough, it's entirely possible that they're not metric. If I can't get on them with the socket, I'll have to grab a wrench. We've got the two nuts and break them loose with the 10 mil. I don't know if they're 10 mil or 3 eighths, but the 10 mil did the job. We want to be very careful with this carburetor because I don't have any gaskets for it. All we're trying to do is clean things up and make it so that it will run. This is the, uh, the governor spring off of the throttle. Pulling on the throttle lever, lever doesn't directly increase the uh, throttle in the, um, on the engine. It just pulls a little bit on this lever, which has a wind vane that goes up beside the fan that's underneath this cover. That kind of works as a governor to set the power. This is our idle screw. And we have our high end I don't know which one's high and low, but high and low jets, fuel intake, and this is essentially the float bowl, although it'll be a diaphragm style rather than a, a true float bowl. Underneath here is going to be a diaphragm with the needle and seat, and that can be a problem with ethanol laced fuel. This bottom diaphragm is held on with uh, Torx. careful not to tear anything here. If we do, we can get new. I'm sh we can get new parts, I'm sure, but uh, we definitely, oh, look at that syrup. We can get new parts, I'm sure, for this, but I don't think we really want to if we don't have to. We don't have a needle and seat under here. That's kind of surprising. Oh, maybe we do. kind of almost like a tire Schrader valve there that this button would push against. I'm guessing that is our uh, needle and seat. We have what's called a Welch plug, which is a dome plug. You put in there and you hit it with a, like a ball peen hammer. It kind of spreads out. There's probably a ball and check valve under that which in an ideal world we would take apart and clean, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. We've got our uh, main and idle jets here. So we're about not one and a half in. Just a sec, Siri's talking to me. Okay, so this is one of the jets. There's a seal on there and a spring. And hopefully a little bit of a cleanup. 
That's all that really needs. That jet's about two. If I had a full rebuild kit that we could change all these O-rings and seals and everything, I would probably take this down uh, and put it in ultrasonic cleaner and we'll go at it with compressed air, etc. But I think just giving it a good spray down with the, uh, with the brake cleaner is uh, all we're going to be able to get accomplished here. We set those jets to about one and a half each. Give this a good cleaning. This is uh, not the greatest. Now this is a quick and dirty cleanup. This isn't a full overhaul. I'm sure somebody is screaming at me, telling me that that's not the direction. There we go. I think that's the direction that that was facing. Not ideal. We've got to hope that this is going to do something for us. Let me get the power head back up on the table here and we'll put the carburetor back on. Here's our carburetor. This is the spring that goes up to the throttle. Connects up to that arm. And of course, the spring doesn't want to stay on there. Just a little bit cranky about staying on, staying up in its uh, in the hole that it's supposed to be in. A little bit of light on the subject. I think that probably just washes it out for you guys, but at least I can see. And since I'm the one turning the wrenches here. Not that I uh, don't appreciate you guys watching, but I'm the one that got to, that's got to get this hooked up. So let me get those nuts back on there. Primer hooked back up. That seems to give the diaphragm a little punch at the bottom here, and that would force some fuel up into the engine. I 
and the throttle is returning very nice. Here's our fuel tank. One thing there's never a shortage of in my father's shop is shavings. So what we'll do is we'll dump this fuel tank. Uh. Hopefully that does the job. We're going to be running the, uh, the pre-mixed true fuel type stuff in this from now on. So hopefully there's not going to be any problems with fuel contamination going forward. These clips go down into here. Of course, we've got to pull the recoil cord out of the way. Get a little wiggle and there's a tab here and a tab on this side that kind of just hold that fuel tank down in place. And I know that uh, it might seem like a broken record when I'm uh, doing small engine repairs, but I prefer to use ear clamps rather than uh, using um, worm gear clamps on things. That's just a personal preference thing. I don't know if that's going to fit on there or not. It'll go. You know, I thought I left that lots long, but it's just enough. But I need the next size up ear clamps. The way these work, if you haven't seen it in a previous video, is you squeeze on there and you squeeze on there and it shortens the circumference. not reusable if you have to replace one or if you have to change one you have to replace it with new but it does have the uh, does do a better job of uh, clamping the holes than a uh, conventional worm gear clamp and usually it doesn't work too bad Here we go. I think that's got it. Well, guys, I think we've got, you know, the worst of this cleaned up. Let's dump some fuel in this thing and see if it's going to run for us. So this is the stuff we use. It's just, you know, something we pick up at uh, a local store. It's about the cheapest brand of the premix fuel that we can find. Should be enough in the fuel tank to let us know if it's going to run. Put the choke on. Give it a couple of shots of prime and we'll see what it does. Oh, probably should open the vent.
Well, I don't know about you guys, but I can pretty much guarantee that was running off the carburetor. We don't want to have it run, you know, wind right up. Uh, you can hear that kind of breaking up just a little bit. That's four stroking. And that means that we're not running lean. If we, uh, if we let it wind right up like a chainsaw, then you're getting into the, uh, the point where it's, um, where it can be running lean and that'll do damage to the engine. It's not idling very well though. So let me snug up the idle and back half, one, half, two. We'll see if we can get it to idle. Idle speed screw. I think we want to run and run that in just a little bit more. Well, that certainly runs a lot better than it did, but I'm not real happy with it. I'm thinking that we need to uh, probably get a carb kit for it. The question is, will this do well enough for my father to do his ice fishing with? And the answer to that is probably yes. For the once or twice he's gonna go ice fishing this year, I think this probably would make do. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find a number on the motor and if not, at least a model number for the Jiffy Ice Auger, and see if I can get a carb kit for this thing. Um, I'd feel a lot better if that diaphragm wasn't so crispy, and then we could take you know all of the parts, uh, take everything down to the individual parts, individual pieces, run it through the ultrasonic cleaner, and uh, get it so that um, it you know idles good and revs up good and uh, does everything that it's supposed to do. I think we're going to end this one here. You know, we've made some progress. We got it running and it's not doing quite as good as I would hope it would, but uh, that's definitely a step in the right direction. And we'll, uh, we'll get the parts in and see if we can make this thing 100%. Got this far, maybe give me one of those thumbs up things. There's merch in links below the video, uh, at least on computer. I assume those will show up on uh, mobile as well. And hey, if you haven't already done so, and you like what you're seeing here on Doug's Messy Garage, why don't you hit that subscribe button, maybe ring that bell icon, would be greatly appreciated. Love to have you come back on a regular basis. I put up uh, videos pretty well every week, and um, we'll catch you guys in the next Mass. Thanks for watching.